I don't buy new cars, I don't buy brand names, I go to Goodwill for my clothes. I like to save money, I like to find bargains, it's the life I chose. I throw nothing away, I'll find a use another day for all this junk I keep. My neighbors all hate me, they abuse and berate me, cause I like doing it cheap. Yeah, I like doing it cheap. Welcome to another episode of Doing It Cheap. How y'all doing? Well, Lots of times, what I do in the winter, I spend a lot of time planning out, you know, what I want to do for the uh, for the spring, you know, or plan a, a shed or a building I want to build, <coughs> or laying out the garden. And and one of the things that uh, I learned. You know, with mathematics is trying to find the optimal space or dimension I could get with what materials I had. Uh, for example, uh, let's say we're laying out a garden, okay? And you got you, you want to keep the rabbits and all that out, so you got some fence wire. And let's say that you have a hundred feet of wire, okay? What shape garden do you make to enclose the most area so you can grow the most vegetables based on how much fence wire you have to go around the uh, uh, garden? Well, it actually proves to be a circle. But let me show you how we arrive at some of this. What I'd like to show you here is that imagine if you will that you've got a hundred feet of wire and you're going to enclose you an area that you want to plant a garden in. And let's just say, just for the heck of it, I'm just trying to illustrate something here. You decided to make a garden 49 feet one way, and one foot the next, and back 49 feet, and back up one foot. 49 plus 1 is 50, 99, and 1 is 100. You would only have a garden that would enclose 49 square feet. And you ain't gonna grow much in there but spaghetti. <laughs> so let's uh let's look at uh, another example. Let's go 40 feet by 10 feet, 40 and 10, and 40 by 10 is going to give you 400 square feet. Alright? And then if we look down here. If we go 25 by 25, that's still that same 100 foot of wire, we're going to be able to enclose 625 feet. Okay? So, the closer we get to the square, the more area we can enclose. However, that's not the perfect one. The perfect one is actually the circle. Because if you take 100 feet of wire, you can actually enclose 797 square feet. All right? Well, why am I telling you all this? Well, for one thing, if you're going to have your garden, it, it might be helpful to know how much, you know, uh, if you've got a, if you're free to make it any shape you want, you might find that, you know, doing it that way is going to give you more area to garden. <coughs> Pardon me. Them boiled eggs. Oh. Anyway, another thing I want to talk to you about 
was when you're planning on building something, for me, like building a shed or a small shop or a barn or whatever, we go back to the same thing. We realize, well, first of all, I ain't building no circle. Circle is going to be too much difficulty to frame. It's going to be too difficult to roof. It's going to be expensive to roof. But when you are building something, and let's say it's 625 square feet, you're going to, and, and let's say you're going to pour a concrete floor, you're going to have 625 square feet of floor no matter what the shape. It's going to be 625 square feet. So on your floor, you're not going to save anything in any particular shape. Your walls you will. Your roof you want. If you got a 625 foot square 625 square foot building, you're going to have to have a certain amount of roofing to cover that 625 square foot of floor. Okay? So the only variable that we have is our walls. So if you're not going to build a circle, build a square. Okay? If you don't have room to build a square, get as close to that square as you can because that's where you're going to have the most area in your barn, workshop, shed, whatever, garage, is the closest to a square you can get. Now, you may say, well, as big a place as I'm building, or as much space as I'm wanting to enclose, a square is just going to be too big of a square. My my trusses are just going to be humongous, and I can't do that. Well, that's that's all that's all fine. But, but what I'm talking about is a small building. Okay, I'm not talking about going out here and building a building that's a hundred foot by a hundred foot, and you got to have a hundred foot trusses because you want it all clear inside and no posts. That's some hellacious trusses, a hundred foot. Boy, howdy. Anyway, what I want to talk to you about is Pythagorean Theorem when we're talking about a roof. So many people don't understand this, and it's very, very simple if I can get it across to you. And those of you that know Pythagorean Theorem, you might as well just shut off the video because it's going to be very boring because I'm going to take my time explaining this. This is rise over run and how, how long a rafter do I need and, or how far will my, uh, my tin go on my roof. It's that kind of thing. We're figuring, working with a triangle here, working with our trusses or our rafters and our ceiling joists, okay? Anyway, for those of you that aren't interested in building uh, something or working with a roof, you know, just go ahead and, and leave now and I appreciate you and I'll catch you on the next video. For those of you that are wanting to learn, because you're like me, you go out here and you ended up with a pile of tin for a roof. Well, how big a roof can I make? Or how steep has it got to be? And, and all this, that, and the other. And this is where we use the materials we have to get the most benefit. Okay? All right. So, Pythagorean Theorem is uh, something that was developed many, 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 many years ago. And basically, it's dealing with a right triangle. And a right triangle means that one of the angles is 90 degrees. Okay? And it was determined that there's a formula that says A squared plus B squared equals C squared. C is the hypotenuse. C is the rafter. And A is the uh, rise. And B is the run. Okay? And that point right there, we'll say, is the middle of our building. And then you've got another rafter over there if you want to. Or you could have you just a building that's just got a simple slope roof. It doesn't matter. But let's just say that you've got some, some uh, roofing material, some tin, some metal, and you want to get as much, you want to... You want to get as much attic space as you get because you're going to be storing stuff up in here. And you sit there and you say, you know, how, how high am I going to be right here? 
Well, <clears throat> just for the sake of argument, what I'm going to pretend is I'm going to pretend uh, that my tin, well, I'm going to say that my roofing material, my tin, is 14 feet long, okay? Of course, most of us is 12. Most of us buy 12 foot lengths, whatever. But this is just an illustration. And we're going to talk about a 412 pitch. And what that means is for every 12 feet you run, you rise up four. And you can take you a ruler and mark out. All right. Well, we're going to take a ruler and I'm just going to draw you a 412 pitch. Okay? And what that means is if my rafter is going to cover, or my, we're going to see how steep my roof is going to be. We say, we say, okay. That right there is how steep we're going to be. That is a 412 pitch. Okay? Means I went 12 this way, 12, let's say feet. 12 feet this way and 4 feet that way. And that gives you an idea looking at the end of your building, you know, what it's going to look like. And you, and you, and you recognize the 412 because it's very, very standard. We see it all the time, especially down here in the south. However, you may go up north and see more of a 612 pitch. You might even see a 1212 pitch. Let's throw a 612 up here. That means for every 12 feet I ran, I've got I've got a I'm going up six feet. And this may look more familiar to you, okay? And then you might say, well, that's not even steep enough because snow ain't going to hardly come off that if you're the Idaho hillbilly and you covered up in five feet of snow. But anyway, that's what we talk about a roof pitch. You know, a 412, a 612, all right? So, I'm over here with my formula. that a, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And if you don't understand algebra, it's time to learn. It ain't hard to do. I used to teach algebra at Tennessee Tech University. And <clears throat> what I used to tell people is algebra is just like dating. You know, if, you, if you're dating, if a guy's dating two girls and they both know about it and they're cool with it, it's all right as long as both of you are, uh, <clears throat> as long as you're treating both of them the same, everything's cool. But if you do something for one and don't do it for the other, then you got trouble, all right? So we've got an equal sign here. And, that, and I want to... I want to find out this right here. I want to find out what is the length of C because in my building I am talking about a building that's 24 feet and this is 12 feet right here and I know that A is going to be 4 feet so how long is that going to be because my piece of 10 is 14 foot long. Well if I want to find out what C is I've got to Isolate C, and here's C squared. Well, I'm going to have to take the square root of both sides to get C by itself. And the square root of C squared is C, and the square root of that is that. And then all I've got to do then is just plug my numbers in. Where A is 4, B is 12, work it all out, you end up that this is 12.65 feet, 12 and 2 thirds feet. 12 foot 8 inches. And that's going to leave me a foot and 4 inch overhang. That's going to leave me a 16 inch overhang if I got 14 foot 10. And you might come back, you might say, well, I, uh, 
I've only I've only got 12 foot 10 and I want to know what what my best thing is I can work with then what you want to do is you want to decide okay maybe I want to solve for A you just manipulate the formula to where you plug in the numbers and it'll solve for A and all you got to do is change the length of your rafter and it gets you more height okay I hope I've totally confused you on that so let me see if this will help A farmer, old country man, was so so proud of his son that had come home. His son had, his son had come home from college. He was the first male in all their families to go to college, and he became a civil engineer. And uh, the old man was proud of him. Had all the family there for this big fine meal. And he says, <clears throat> he says, son, he said, I want, I want you to know how proud I am of you. He said, you know, I've worked all my life, all my life, to save the money to send you to college. And he says, I work 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Sometimes I'd work one job and then go to another, but I made damn sure that I had the money when it come time for you to go to college. I could send you to school. He said, son, would you grace us by saying something to all these fine folks in algebra? The son was a little bit embarrassed for his dad. And he said, dad, algebra is not a language. Algebra is mathematics. He said, boy, I worked my ass off for you. And I, all I ask is you say something to our family in algebra, you're going to give me lip. Now, by God, boy, I worked my ass off for you. Now, you tell these folks something in algebra. Well, he knew that the area of a circle was pi r square. So the boy stood up in front of everybody and he said, pi r square. The old man, he just turned red all over. He got so angry, just shaking. He hauled off and he back backhanded that boy, plumb out of his chair, onto the floor. And he said, I worked all my damn life to get you an education. And you come up with this crap that pi or square. He says, by God, boy, cornbread or square, pi or round. Y'all have a wonderful day, and a better tomorrow. Bye.